Guys, welcome back. Um, so today we've got a, an interesting test and it's actually the first time we've tested driving irons uh, on the channel. Aside from you hitting one in the hybrid we, Yeah, video, that's yeah. right. But we're specifically testing ju just shafts alone. Correct. Right, so yep. uh, we haven't really got into that market yet because really it's, it's been a, 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 a part of the kind of menu of options yeah. we, we haven't offered in the past. Which is almost hilarious to be honest, because yeah. look behind know. to say we don't have an option. That, is like It's amazing to say, but you've added, yeah. how many shafts have you added for driving irons now? Well, we added a bunch, yeah. but we actually, what we kind of found was that the shafts that we had for hybrids mm. were kind of the similar weight oh, okay. categories and characteristics that right. people were using in driving irons. So Very whether cool. that be like you tried their 10C white, Acratur's the extreme, Atmos Blue, yep. uh, Graphite Design DI, yep. um, shafts like this, hazardous black shafts like that. Huh. So we decided to do a little test with you today, based on what is Matt's 250 yard club. Yeah, because we've had a lot of conversations about what, like, what should I be doing with south of the driver That's before right. my four iron. Mm -hmm. um, been playing on the course with my, I have like a five wood. Yeah, it's been okay, but um, we've never really dove into that part of the bag yet. And I've yeah. never actually tried a driving iron. This is my first driving iron mm -hmm. experience, especially fitting wise. Interesting. Um, so yeah. it was cool for me just to kind of even broach the subject. Exactly. And it's a question I think I brought up with you. I noticed, um, I guess when Tiger got a bunch of publicity for using the Tensi White or whatever he was using initially, yeah. we were chatting about you know what are, what are guys using? Mm -hmm. And I just found it interesting that so many tour players were using graphite right. in, a, in, an, in an iron, mm -hmm. essentially what is an iron. Right. So I think the whole topic of it is quite interesting. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Exactly. So I think uh, on, on that sort of point and you know, people using sort of these driving irons, I think what we found was there's added versatility with going with something like that. Yes. If you have enough speed. Yes. I would say that would be a key component to this. So right. um, the versatility that I thought you would find with driving iron, maybe over five wood and maybe even over hybrid is mm -hmm. your ability to shift flight vertically. Right. Move it up, move it down. So you obviously you can put it back in your stance a little bit and, and you know deal off the club. Mm -hmm. You can put it up in your stance a little bit and flight it higher. You have right. the certainly the power to do both of those things with this. Maybe you don't you know, five wood might be more difficult because of the, the nature of the, the the head design. Yes. That that would be the case. Um, for those of you who, who follow um, or follow our Instagram TV channel, right. um, we actually done, Cam done a little video on this the other day, the difference between a hybrid yeah. and, a, and a driving iron. Which is great. Uh, yeah, it, it, and just talking to small little kind of club fitting related topics every day. The reason there's more versatility for Matt to hit this lower, it's, it's a CG um, sort of issue. Right. So with an iron, obviously a taller face and a narrower body, mm -hmm. the CG is higher and further forward. Okay. Okay. If we take a hybrid, for example, or, a, or even a fairway wood in your yes. case, the shallower head and the wider body moves the CG further back and right. lower. Right. Most of us by now have heard enough people talking about when you move the CG further back and lower, what influence yeah. that has in the, go the golf ball makes the it ball go up. higher. Yep. Right. So um, that's, that's something that, that would give you added versatility is the, the raised CG on this. Very cool. Okay. So in keeping with this sort of, you know, common theme right now of, of hollow constructions, mm -hmm. the, the, this is the, the Callaway UT. Yes. Um, a little bit quicker because of that, that design. This is hollow. Yeah. Oh, it's, okay. It's a hollow one as well. So wow. it, it actually has, you know, obviously the enclosed cavity in the back. Yep. So, um, you know, added ball speed and that type of thing. Yeah. It's How did it feel when you, you hit a few? Honestly, it felt extremely good. So we were kind of <clears> honestly just messing around before we started shooting. Yeah. Talking about whether we would shoot a, a driving iron video today. Mm -hmm. And my initial thought whenever I saw you hitting some, I just thought, I don't think I would hit one very well. Like right. I kind of thought I would be sort of too low with it and mm -hmm. maybe a little scuffy through the turf. But I, I mean, I was hitting them about as good as anything in this distance range that I've ever hit. And right. the feel off the face was, I guess, surprisingly... <clears throat> jumpy like you really felt like you were getting some nice speed off of it. I think that's that's the yeah. the, the nature of this one specifically is mm. that it, it does feel really fast. It's really um, nice. The interesting thing for me was was your reaction when actually you hit one in particular. Mm. You basically said like literally build me one of those. I know. Like I want one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, one and of the it, shaft and head combinations that we tried yeah. I said yeah that's for, for, me. for someone who's not even by or trying it for that purpose you yeah. literally went this feels that good I literally want one in my bag right now. 
a couple shots I hit where I thought I've never hit a shot quite mm -hmm. like that, that I feels guess. Like that. It didn't feel and fly, the way it flew, mm -hmm. it just was so nice that I thought, yeah, I kind of want yeah. one of those. In terms of the gapping, and we've talked a little bit recently about set composition, obviously, yeah. and, and the, the, the way we try and build the most balanced set we can. I think that's where something like this would fit in so well for you, Matt. So mm -hmm. we've got your driver we know goes 300 plus. We fit you to a three wood that goes about 275, 280. Yes. The 250 club, which is kind of where the topic for you know came up for me in this video is, yeah. I wanted to fit you to something that went 250. Right. That was where I thought this one would really fit in really nicely. Yeah, and it did. I was surprised that mm. it ended up getting out to that kind of, as we see from the data, they were flying kind of 230, 235. Yeah. Um, and getting out to 250, I was kind of surprised that they went that far. Right. To be honest with you, I kind of thought I'd be struggling to get 230 total. Yeah. So interesting, isn't it? It's one of those things. I mean, if someone is really, I guess, what's the word? Um, I don't want to say afraid, but I was afraid to try because I just didn't think it would be good yeah. for me. Um, I think you might be surprised at how much ball speed you can get from a design like that. Definitely. I mean, it's not it's not a, a, a forged mm -hmm. two iron. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's some help here. I mean, it's a nice looking club. It looks. Uh, fairly narrow in the sole and That's narrow right. in the top line. But Even when you look at it there, there's a little yeah. bit of offset. So but it's not too you know, much. Like no, it's definitely not, not, yeah, not off-putting. It's not too much. So um, in terms of the, the sort of how that fits into us, I mean, we, we will probably add that into the, the sort of, you know, the hybrid fit now at, at TXG. So it's when, you know, when, when our customers come in, if we do find they're struggling a little bit with hybrids or even fairy woods, We'll probably we'll probably go go grab uh, a long iron for them to try. I think that's awesome because there's so many people I play with that say mm -hmm. I don't like hybrids. Yeah, yeah. I hook my hybrid or I'm not consistent mm -hmm. with so it. A lot of people like, say that. Yeah. yeah, and and obviously there's a reason why mm -hmm. that is. So now for you to be able to say, okay, mm -hmm. you're not that type of player. Let's yeah. try a driving iron and get some very. I mean, I'm assuming you can get some very different ball flights out of well, this. Well, one of the things I love about this particular and driving irons in general yeah. that we don't have with hybrids and fairy woods is our ability to adjust loft and lie. Okay. So we we have the the hosel obviously where we can kind of move right. it like a regular iron. So, you know, if we wanted to, if we you said, Ina, I really like this, but I'm hooking it a little bit. Okay, Matt, let's try it a little bit flatter. Flat, yeah. You know, maybe 21 isn't the loft. Maybe we nudge it to 20. That type of thing, so we can we can get specific because of the obviously it's designed like an iron. So it's essentially as adjustable as yeah. an iron, as a forged iron. Absolutely, yeah, that's very cool. Which is neat. So we picked four shafts for Matt yep. to try. Um, we tried the the new Tensi white. That was the first um, one yep. we tried. We tried that, which is uh, 100 gram X Flex. Now, so that was the stiffest, heaviest of all the ones we tried. Right, and I'm pretty sure Tiger used this briefly in the old TaylorMade driving iron. Is that right? He uh, he did, and then he I believe this this week in the the new G R P uh, so G A P R. Yep. Um, he was trying Tensi Orange. He's got the uh, orange I going in that on. One. Yep. Uh, obviously loves that. He, he plays that in his woods as well. Right. Um, so we went Tensi White 100 gram uh, X, mm -hmm. and then the other ones are a little bit little bit lighter. So with the graphite design, um, sorry that was 105 gram X as this well. This was heavy as well, yeah. And then we had two others. We had the the Acra Tours the Extreme, which is around 90 gram. This uh, one's lighter. A little bit lighter. Oh, I didn't know it was lighter. Uh, and, and when you first hit it, when it kind of jumped off the face, I kind of went, hmm, that's maybe just a little bit less weight. Because looking at when you first hit 10, say, uh, white, and you hit DI, yeah. they both went left. They and did tend to go left. If they were just a little bit heavy, wow, uh, that's that, interesting. That, that you were just you know quite timing them as well. Hmm. Then you dropped into the slightly lighter Acra. Uh, and then you start flushing it. I mean, your your it's reaction, so you know, was was instant. That that was yeah. That's as good as <clears> a, a long <throat> club uh, a feeling off yeah. a club I've ever had. So I honestly I thought you were going to tell me this was about a hundred. Right. It's interesting that it's yeah. lighter. A little bit lighter. But with my two. golf swing, I tend to get a bit behind me. Yeah. So the extra weight not helping me. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, potentially could get the club yeah. stuck a little bit uh, okay. behind you. Um, interesting. You know, whether the, the just the stiffness, the the bend profile. And how, how it loads and unloads is that's just cool. is not quite for you. Yeah. You I, certainly didn't enjoy the Tensi White, that's for sure. I think I hit a couple of ones that were pretty good, mm -hmm. but I didn't hit any the way I hit yeah. a couple with this guy where they just really kind of took off. That's right. Your, your feedback was always was really interesting on that versus other ones. Yeah. Um, and the other one, the Atmos, you hit, uh, so you hit the Atmos. Okay. It was okay. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't, wasn't bad. It, it, we see from the, the numbers that it tend yeah. to spin a little bit more than the it, other it ones. It spun a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and it was it was also, you know, equally as, pretty much equally straight as the, the straight. Acra. Yeah. Uh, but not quite, uh, not quite getting to our 250 magic number. So this is one that's kind of cool from my perspective because 
just changing shafts only. Yeah. We've actually made some pretty substantial ball flight differences and spin differences. Yeah, I think most of it comes down to the one you rotated the most. The one, so ro in rotation, losing loft. Okay. Right? Yep. So we presented a little less loft to the Tours the Extreme right. because we were able to close the face the right amount. Okay. Right? So, okay. you know, the, it makes sense that the DI spun the most and because it was the furthest left. Gotcha. So the face retained the most amount of loft. You know, gotcha. not that it's a higher launch shaft in any way, it just for you didn't allow you to uh, rotate the head it's coming enough. in just slightly this way versus this yeah, way. Yeah, that's it. So loft and rotation is obviously a key element in terms that's of, uh, that's, that's why we call it dynamic loft, loft yeah. in motion. Um, that's cool. Yeah. Pretty, uh, that's pretty just another way that the shaft can influence your delivery. Exactly, in way, right? yeah. which is always the crucial point, the way the shaft, the way the club overall uh, influences your swing in terms of what what delivery ultimately is or impact ultimately is because that for someone who has not mm -hmm. I guess who hasn't been exposed to that type of knowledge would say okay this is the heaviest <laughs> stiffest one yeah I want that to go the lowest yeah. but for me because of the way my golf swing is a slightly lighter shaft mm -hmm. allowed me to square it up a bit better and hit it lower that's right crazy that's it so it was yeah. just it was this, it was the shaft's influence on rotation rotations influence on loft right. That's so cool. um, yeah, pretty pretty neat and, and something that we'll probably add in. We'll maybe we'll maybe do some some other add-ons. We'll do we you know we've done hybrid versus five wood in the past. We might do hybrid versus five wood versus long iron. We should do know, that and make that make that yeah. a little test. That video was really popular, so I'd love to I'd love to expand Get on that into one. that one. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you know this is this is something that I think that has some legs for us to turn into a little bit of a mini series, yes. like we like to do and expand on and. You know, maybe try some other heads. That was the Callaway UT head mm -hmm. we tried today. We guy. also carry the the, uh, the the PXG, the 0311X. We try the. We also have the the TMB from Titleist. Yep. Uh, we have the P790 UDI from Taylor. That's what Taylor you had Made. tried. Yep. That's what I had tried. Uh, obviously, the new ones coming in uh, yes. from from TaylorMade. So it's a segment that's that's kind of the the companies are focusing on and, and adding a few uh, options in there. It's growing fast. Now, the only thing I want to ask is. Is it strictly for fast players and good players, or is there a way to configure this that someone who is maybe a bit mm -hmm. of a slower swing speed player, maybe like a 10, 15 handicap, is there a market mm -hmm. for this, or is this strictly fast players only? Um, I would say there, there probably is a, a conversation at times of, for a certain player who's just looking to get, to have a safe club. Okay. Right, a hot long iron that, that you can kind of get out there, you know, 200 knock yards, it, knock 210. Knock it down the fairway. Yeah, knock it down the fairway and, and kind of if your driver and your woods don't feel so good, uh, these are so hot mm. that there, there probably is a conversation that that for certain people might provide a, a little bit uh, more of a safe play. One of our, one of our uh, you know, really good uh, customers and, and, and viewers of the channel, uh, Vito Rizzo was in yesterday actually. So Vito's, you know, kind of, You'd consider Vito a mid handicap golfer. Okay. Yep. Vito came in yesterday, um, really wanted to try the, the P790, so we said, no problem, come in, we'll try a bunch of shafts. So he actually done really well with the stock hazardous black in that one. Oh, yeah. Vito, as, as I say, is a mid handicap. I think Vito is maybe a 12 or something like that, maybe a little higher. Um, was hitting it nicely, about 230, 235. Wow. Really awesome. good. It was, it was very, very good. And I could really see that for Vito as, as a club that he. Uh, he uses when his game's maybe not quite at its best. Right. So Vito's, you know, got some really good speed, but sometimes the, the ball flight can just get away from him a little bit. It's a good option though. Really good option for him. Yeah. And it wasn't a good option for him off the, off the interestingly enough, off the turf. Oh, it was okay. only good off the tee club. And he was completely fine with that because that was the purpose of him buying it. He wanted, he wanted a, a club that gave him a little bit more safety uh, off the tee. Uh, a little more, more control, wasn't, wasn't really worried about what it done off the turf. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, you can go anywhere from 17, this is a 21 degree that I was hitting. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's the other thing. I mean, someone who's a little slower might just want a little more loft that's right. and vice versa mm -hmm. to give you kind of mm -hmm. um, the best uh, fit for you, I guess. Exactly. Cool. cool. That was awesome. Guys, we hope you enjoyed this. Leave yeah. your comments uh, how we can expand in this series to give you guys more value, um, answering any questions that, that you have on this Long Iron series. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll no doubt expand on it with some of our ideas. Yeah. We were kind of noodling some ideas uh, together just even before, as we were sort of shooting this video. So uh, we, we think we've got some cool ideas. Absolutely. Definitely more to come. Cool. Okay, thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon.